Hey everybody, it's Julie here from Baby Sleep Made Simple, here for our live Q&A. This is happening every week now, usually on Mondays, so forgive me for changing the date, but I had my little ones here yesterday, I had nobody around to help, and my little guy's having a rough patch, which I now think is teething, and I never would have thought it was teething before, but he was so grisly today, I gave some baby Motrin, and then he took like a ridiculously great nap. So I think it's teething. He's got this cute little one poking through. So anyway, sorry about changing the date for you guys because usually the call is Monday at this time, but I figured it's better to not be interrupted. Um, so welcome. I hope you guys are having a good week. Hope your week has started off well. Um, if you are new to these live calls, all you have to do is post any questions you have about your little one's sleep here in the comments, and I'll be happy to give you some advice. If I have a guide already on my YouTube channel or on my website, then I will point you in that direction. Um, that's about it. Let me know how you're doing. Um, if anything is going well, going not well, I'll be happy to give you guys some advice. And I'm here for the next hour or so until I have to take my daughter to tennis. <laughs> Fun, busy summer for her. She's like a water sports camp during the day and then she gets to do tennis sometimes in the afternoon, so she is living my best life. Um, okay, uh, hey Kara, hey Supriya, hey Tracinko. Ah. Uh, let me know how you guys are doing, and let's see, I don't wanna waste any more time, because usually I don't even get to all the questions, so let's see how many we can get to today. Um, if you ever miss one of these live Q and A's, you can go to my IGTV, and I believe that we are storing them there. And then we're trying to actually get them all on YouTube as well. So we're doing our best to like save them and distribute. Okay, the first question today is from Lucy. Lucy Warden says, when waning off the dummy, would you recommend working on night sleep first and then naps? Thanks. Yeah, I definitely recommend separating it out. Oh, it's raining again. Sorry, <laughs> I just sent my baby out for a walk. I'm like, oh, look at that. We had a massive thunderstorm today. It was amazing, but now I see it's raining again. No tennis. Sorry, um, blah, distracted brain. I recommend definitely separating out when you're gonna wean off the dummy or if you're gonna wean off of like the Merlin Magic Sleep Suit or whatever you're gonna wean off, I recommend doing one thing at a time, like nights versus um, naps. So I'd probably try to do uh, nights first, Lucy. There's a thunder. Um, I would definitely try to do nights first for all the reasons that we begin sleep training at night as well um, in the beginning. And that's because your little one is the most tired at bedtime, most likely to comply to changes in their sleep routine. So I would definitely not offer it at bedtime and try your hardest to not offer it during the night and you can continue to give it for naps. In the meantime, not like a long-term strategy, but in the meantime, you can do this. Um, it's okay, it doesn't confuse your little one. It could just help keep them well rested during the day. And then I'd say after like, just a few days, two days of not having the dummy for night sleep, then you can also not offer it for naps. All right, good luck. Let us know how it goes and if you have any other tips for us. Tracinko, issues sleeping independently for naps and did a sleep training refresher. Some days were tough and she refused to sleep despite following awake windows. She started to sleep well again. It lasted a week, but now she wakes up in the middle of the night. It takes two to three hours to sleep again. We follow awake windows as a routine two hours, 2.15, 2 2.30 to three for bed. And then I don't see any follow-up comments. Um, basically, there's a few different reasons why, like let's say you begin sleep training with your little one. Tracy, I'm just gonna kind of like generalize to help you and to help everybody, help you figure it out and to help other people. If you sleep from your little one and they take to it really well and they're sleeping great and then you hit a rough patch down the road, a few weeks down the road, a few months down the road, the typical reasons why your baby's sleep suddenly falls apart. Okay, we're not talking about um, traveling. We're not talking about my baby was sick and I gave her comfort. We're talking about like, I don't know what in the world happened, but my little one's suddenly not sleeping as well. The typical reasons are inconsistency. I hate to say it because I'm not one to ever blame or judge parents, honestly, but I'm just gonna be real. Usually the reason why our little ones sleep backtracks is because we have become inconsistent. Maybe they had a weird night where they cried a little bit more at bedtime and we thought, mm, I'll just feed her to sleep tonight and it's fine, tomorrow we'll go back on track. 
or there was a weird night waking or a long night waking or a sudden night waking when your little one hadn't woken. Any deviation from your sleep training plan unfortunately confuses our little ones. And then the next night they wake up and think, well, I'm just gonna fuss because like, I got fed last night, I got pulled into mommy's bed. It's nobody's fault. It's nothing like that. It's just behavioral reinforcement. So we've gotta be super consistent. So yes, even once you've sleep trained your little one, you still have to stay consistent. They still have to fall asleep on their own at bedtime every single night, forever. <laughs> they still have to, if they happen to wake up in the night and if something's bothering them, you can go and give comfort, but then they need to fall back to sleep on their own. These things have to continue in order for your little one to continue sleeping well. So inconsistencies is a big one. Then there can also be kind of easier ones like schedule issues. Like my little one is growing up and wants to drop the third nap. So is suddenly fighting sleep. So if your little one's like, usually eight to nine months old and suddenly naps are crap and they're fighting bedtime, could be that they wanna drop that third nap. Excuse me, if they're 15, 16 months old, it could be that they wanna drop down to one nap. Um, it's a combination of not needing that extra nap, of needing to extend awake times. That's the second reason. The third reason is just a crappy daytime schedule. So I'm still working on naps, naps aren't great, or for whatever reason my little one's not napping well, like naps were just at random times and they were really short. That can also, affect your little one's night sleep, but this one is also a little bit easier because you do your best to give your little one good naps, you work your hardest, but it's up to them to actually nap. So even if they have a crappy nap day, but they're sleep trained at night, we don't say, oh, she's a bit too tired because she uh, didn't nap well, so I'm just gonna help her tonight and we'll start over fresh. It's okay, if they're sleep trained at night, you continue to be consistent with independent sleep at night, and then you just work on naps. So Tracinko, I hope that you get an idea. The only other last one I'll say is if your little one is suddenly awake in the night, for two hours, two hours, like random. And they're not crying, they're just kind of awake. It's usually developmental. So they're learning new skills and their sweet little brains and bodies just can't shut off because like my little guy is talking so much and he's doing fine motor stuff. He's just like looking at his fingers all day, just amazed. I gave him a banana yesterday. It's like the highlight of his life. He's just like doing this with a banana. <laughs> like he was on LSD or something. He's just like, you know, squishing his banana. So much is going on in his little brain. And so I have noticed it's not been two to three hours, I'm like, uh, knock on wood, but he does wake up in the night and just kind of like talk to himself for a while, roll, roll around for a while. And the best thing you can do during these ridiculously long night wakings, if your little one is not upset, is leave them alone. You want them to stay comfortable on their own in their crib and falling back asleep on their own. And the last thing you wanna do, if they're not even upset about it, is to go in and help them back to sleep because you're worried you're losing sleep. But guess what? Now they're gonna want you to help them back to sleep every night. So those are the main reasons why our little ones do wake up at night. So Tracy, I hope that gives you an idea of what's going on and what you can do to work on it. You can also DM us and let us know. Nikita, sorry, 6.30 p.m. Okay, let me see if I can find your other message. Hey, Sapria, do you recommend crib tents for kids who jailbreak the crib? Great question. I do not recommend crib tents like the traditional crib tents. They're really unsafe, so definitely don't use those. There's a new device. Wow, did you hear that thunder? <gasps> this is amazing. Oh, I love thunderstorms. Um, traditional crib tents are a no-no because they're really unsafe. There's a new thing called the slumber pod. If any of you guys use a slumber pod, let me know. I have several moms in 21 Days to Peace and Quiet, my sleep training program, who rave about the slumber pod, but I'm not yet recommending it because I haven't checked it out and I want to make sure that it's safe. So these are moms in my group and they know about safe sleep and they say that it is great, um, but you don't use this for a jailbreaker, great term. You use it to black out your little one's crib. So if your little one is climbing out of the crib, we don't want to like do anything to their crib to restrain them. Instead, there's two things that you do. The first thing is you try to keep them in their crib. So you make sure the crib mattress is at the lowest level. Most of the time it is for older babies and toddlers, but just double check there's not one slat that you missed um, and drop that mattress down as low as it will go. The second thing is many cribs, especially the fancy ones, have uneven sides. They have this beautiful swooping back, right? If you have an uneven sided crib, turn it. So your higher side is facing out and your lower side is facing the wall. We usually do the opposite. That can add like a few inches to your little one's crib overnight. You can also angle your little one's crib, especially if it's uneven sides. You can like angle it in the corner of a room. So it's like, rather than only having one backside against the wall, now you kind of have two 
two walls, like so two boundaries, you could do that as well. Another thing to do is, if, especially if your little one is younger than two, like younger than 24 months, and you see them repeatedly climbing out and you've done all the safety checks, make sure there's nothing inside their crib. Maybe they're now cuddling with um, a stuffed animal. Maybe you've given them a pillow because they're 18 months or older and you thought they needed a pillow. Maybe you've put bumpers around the crib because they're one and a half and you're like, they're certainly old enough for bumpers. These things happen. Bumpers, I don't like bumpers. I don't recommend them, but a lot of parents use them. So if there's anything in the crib that your little one is using to get a leg up, remove it from the crib. When you've done all of this and they're still climbing out, I would do like one round of really trying to encourage your little one to stay in the crib. So when if they climb out at bedtime or during the night, if you see them trying to climb out, I would go into the room and I would be very firm. You can always be loving, but be very firm and just say like, no, you have to stay in the crib. Put them back in the crib if they've climbed out. If they try to climb out again, I would even like, you know, kind of like hold onto their arms and gently lovingly, but just say, no, 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 no. It's time for sleep or whatever you normally say to really help them understand that they can't climb out of the crib. You may need to sit in their room for a few nights to help them get back into the crib every time. Either your little one will know that you're the boss and listen to you and not climb out of the crib anymore, and then you can continue having them sleep in the crib, or they won't. <laughs> They'll continue to climb out. If they continue to climb out despite doing everything that you can, then you need to transition to a toddler bed. But I don't recommend any device to like trap your little one in the crib. But if you guys use the slumber pod for blacking out while traveling, then let me know if you like it and if you think it's safe. I asked them for like a free sample and they were like, no. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't know, I want to pay for it. Um, okay, I hope that helps. Sweat. Hey, Sweat, the nine month old is still taking an hour to fall asleep for the second nap. Yes, you're in the NAPS program. And uh, if you post in the NAPS program today, if you post on my post, because I'm answering questions, and I'll give you detailed advice because I know that we've been going back and forth and talking about this second nap. So we'll definitely make it work, Sweat, okay? Um, I will answer your question in a little while in the NAPS group. Okay, the next question is from Luciana. Seven month old used to wake up one to two times at night. He's now waking up every two hours. Help. The best thing that you can do is teach your little one to sleep independently. Even if you were helping them fall asleep and they slept through the night, even if you were helping them fall asleep and they were sleeping well, like why can't we just go back to me helping them fall asleep but only waking up once or twice in the night, right? Like I totally understand this. And you're not asking too much as a parent. But unfortunately, if your little one is not truly sleeping independently, then we can't expect um, any of these sleeping patterns to stay. It can all change as they get older uh, for a variety of reasons. So Luciana, if you haven't yet taught your little one to go into the crib at bedtime with their eyes open, aware of where they are, to see you leave the room and to fall asleep on their own and to also fall asleep um, during the night when they wake. If you haven't yet done that, then when you do that, this will fix the night waking. So at seven months, they may have one night feed or maybe they can sleep through the night. But um, that really is the fix for it. So I would encourage you to do that. You can hop on over to Baby Sleep Made Simple and check out my seven month old sleep training guide. Priya Carr, I'm doing bad. I started bringing baby to bed last few nights just to get some sleep. You're not bad. You haven't done anything wrong. You're just, you're just tired, man. I totally feel you. He sleeps better and I sleep better, but how hard will it be to go back 100% into his crib after this tough patch? Look, it's really hard to say. It depends on your little one's temperament. It depends on their age. It depends on how long you end up sharing the bed. So really, I'm trying to like give you, I can't say, like I don't like saying things like don't do that, that's a really bad thing, you're creating bad habits. Because I understand like why parents, why we parents make these decisions because we're exhausted, because it gets our little one to fall asleep, it stops their crying, I totally get it. So Priya, you do whatever you feel is right. Obviously make sure your little one is as safe as possible. Um, and then once you get to the point where you're like, okay, we've gotta go back in the crib, we've gotta make this work, I'm ready to sleep train, that's when you move them back into the crib. Don't do it half-heartedly because if you do, you'll be inconsistent and then your little one will kind of learn, oh, if I continue to push harder and harder, then I'll get to come into the bed and that makes sleep training more difficult. So do what you need to do and then summon up your you know, energy and your will and when you're like, okay, this is it and I'm, I'm ready to be consistent, then begin sleep training. Don't mom guilt yourself right now and think of how bad it's gonna be in the future. Just enjoy the present, enjoy the moment and then just know that when you're ready to sleep train, um, you have a clear plan of how to do it and we're here to help you. Kathleen, my daughter's eight weeks old, congratulations, and still wakes up every three hours overnight to eat. When will she be ready to lengthen the time between overnight feeds? It really depends on your newborn. Um, 
first of all, talk to your newborn's doctor and say, well, you're two month old, you're a big girl. Talk to their doctor and say, how long can we go between feeds overnight? It really depends on your baby, how big she is, how much she's growing. Your doctor may say, I want your little one fed every three nights. But your doctor could say, let her wake, let her sleep as long as she wants. Um, and then hop on over to Baby Sleep Made Simple and check out my two month old sleep guide. So it's how to help your two month old sleep well, something like that. It's quite lengthy. It's got lots of specific tips that you can do to help your baby's night sleep stretches um, extend all the while prioritizing their nutrition. Okay, so check that out and talk to your baby's doctor. Janelle, hi, we are now on night three of the Ferber method and it's working great so far, awesome. I just have a question regarding night feeds. Should I do like normal lights dimmed, no interaction to keep her sleepy? Or should she be going down in her crib after a night feed fully awake? Yes, so you, what you wanna do if you are in the midst of sleep training and you're holding onto a night feed is you wanna keep your little one awake. This doesn't mean like, turn on the lights awake. But what it means is they're hungry, they're having that one night feed, so make sure they're genuinely hungry. If you put them on the breast or on the bottle and they fall asleep within two minutes, they're not hungry. They're just using that feed as a way to fall back asleep and then you should fully wean off feeds. But if you're convinced that your little one's hungry or if they're still quite young, then you know they'll be quite awake and then what you can do is go ahead and feed them um, have them take a full feed. If you notice, as soon as the slowing like slows, as soon as the feed starts slowing down, or their body starts to relax a bit, then take them off the breast or take them off the bottle. Get a good burp. And what you can do is you can change a diaper. I don't recommend that you always change a diaper during the night, but if you want to ensure you're keeping your little one awake, then you just change her diaper. Again, with the lights, like you can turn on the flashlight of your phone and like nothing too bright. Change your baby's diaper so that they can't fall asleep while you're changing a diaper, put them back in the sleep sack and then into the crib. You know they're still awake to fall back asleep on their own. So you don't need to like overstimulate them. You don't need to turn the lights on. You don't need to be talking to them. But if you fear that they're half asleep when they go back into the crib, which could continue the night wakings or lead to more, then a cool little thing you could do is just change your diaper after you give them a night feed and back into the crib awake. El Rub, my three and a half month old wakes up at the same time every day, 7 a.m. He's on a one and a half to two hour awake time first. Nap is at 9 a.m. Sounds good. I don't see any questions. Sorry, El Rub, I lost the rest of your question. Um, I'll wait and see, but three and a half month old, everything sounds good. The first nap of the day could even be, it depends on how your little one's napping, it could even be shorter, like at the one to one and a half hour mark. Millie Coop, baby is eight months sleep trained and self-soothing, started fighting naps and bedtime. So Millie, hopefully you were on in the beginning of the call where I walked um, Tracinko through a few different reasons why your sleep trained baby is suddenly fighting sleep. That's a really good idea for a website article. I'm gonna write that. Why is my sleep trained baby fighting sleep? Let me write this down real quick because I feel like we do get asked this. Sorry guys, I will forget otherwise. Why? Okay, so hopefully you were there. Um, when I was answering Tracy Inko's question you, and you heard all of the various reasons why a sleep trained baby is suddenly fighting sleep. What I will say is if your baby is sleep trained and sleeping beautifully, like two weeks or more, not that first week where it's still iffy, but like two weeks, three weeks, two months, six months, whatever. And suddenly, literally out of the blue, fighting naps, fighting bedtime, um, and you can't attribute it to recent traveling, to obvious illness. If it truly just smacked you and you have no idea why, it could be developmental, and it, which therefore means it could be a regression. And we do often see regressions between um, eight to 10 months. We see a, a sleep regression that happens between eight to 10 months. But it's hard for me to say just seeing like your one sentence. I don't want to lead you in the wrong direction. So Millie, if you hop on over to Baby Sleep Made Simple, I have a guide on the eight month sleep regression. Have a look at it because it also gives you eight month old sleep tips to follow. So you can have a look at that, decide whether it's regression or not. Could be a sign that your little one wants to drop the third nap if they haven't dropped the third nap yet. As I mentioned earlier, it could be just because there was one or two nights where things were a little bit weird and you were a little bit inconsistent. Maybe you helped your baby fall asleep. Maybe you lingered a little bit too long in their bedroom. Maybe you patted them to sleep. Anything like that is totally understandable and it's not your fault, but that can definitely make our little ones sleep back track. So um, check out that guide and then if you didn't catch the beginning of the video, then watch the replay when it's posted in like 30 minutes and you can hear me explain a little bit more. Okay, sorry, I wanna to get to some more questions. All right, good luck, Millie. 
All right, next question is from Steph. Raduazo, if my baby was born three weeks early, do I follow everything like wait times and sleep training for the due date? Yes. If I want to sleep train at six months, can I do it at six months or wait the extra three weeks? So three weeks is like my cutoff. Anything before three weeks, we definitely want to go by your baby's due date or adjusted age. Um, one week early is not that big of a deal. Three weeks, I do think, is something um, considerable. So we should consider it. Um, so for instance, I if you want to sleep train, sleep train at six months, I'd probably sleep train at six and a half if you can manage to wait. I mean... The thing is, uh, you know, my program starts at five months. So if you wait till your baby six months, you're definitely ready. A lot of baby sleep consultants say you're fine to start at four months. So know you're, that you're safe when your baby is six months by their birth date. But if you in particular wanted to wait until six months, I'd probably wait till six and a half just to kind of split the difference. I hope that helps. Stephanie Ann Rooney, baby is almost 11 months. She was having early morning wakings and fighting naps. I eventually fixed that issue, awesome. And then she started waking at night. Could it be that she got too much daytime sleep? Yes, so you wanna limit total daytime sleep to three hours for an 11 month old. So it's two naps that total three hours. You know, what would be ideal is an hour and a half, an hour and a half. But some 11 month olds can take an hour morning nap and a two hour afternoon nap. But I would limit it to a total of three hours. Otherwise it does worsen night sleep. Um, usually we see night wakings and early wakings if there's too much daytime sleep. You can hop on over to Baby Sleep Me Simple and check out my 11 month old sleep guide if you want some more tips as well. Be Wheel, top tips for eliminating the nursing to sleep association. I love that emoji because it's like, am I asking too much? Um, I like that you said top tips because it's like, otherwise you know that I could fill up like two Instagram lives on this subject. Um, there's two ways that you can go about it. You can do a quick method or you can do a more gradual method. It really just depends. In general, my philosophy is to slow things down and to separate out like the steps of sleep training and do them one at a time. So it's like a gentle transition for your baby, gentle transition for you, and ideally less stressful, fewer tears, that kind of stuff. However, there are a few instances where I'm like, let's just get it done because otherwise we can drag out the process. So eliminate, So I say all this to say that some parents find success if they have a baby that is addicted to nursing to sleep and they're really, really, really nervous about just not offering the breast uh, or the bottle on night one of sleep training, then they spend a few days replacing that sleep association with another. They rock to sleep, they hold to sleep. You know, I wouldn't do anything crazy like the stroller in the house or anything like that. And I probably wouldn't, I guess you could do the baby carrier, but they do some other way of helping their baby fall asleep that doesn't involve feeding. So this can work for some babies, especially if it's somebody else, like, you know, another caregiver doing it. And if that makes you comfortable and if your baby adapts pretty well to it, you could spend like three nights doing this, kind of break that feeding to sleep association and then begin sleep training. Don't then get caught rocking your baby for the next six months. Then be like, look, look how great we've done. It'll give you confidence. Look how great we've done. We've got my little one off feeding to sleep. Now she's only rocked to sleep. We can both rock to sleep, so let's sleep train together. Um, but for other little ones, they just won't have any part of it. And in that instance, I feel like we need to ju we're just prolonging the process and we need to just kind of cold turkey it. So you can try replacing the sleep association with another one, like rocking or holding to sleep. But if it's going to like double the amount of time that you spend getting your little one to sleep and your little one's hating it and wriggling around in your arms and you're miserable, then I'd say it's not going to work. And instead, let's just begin sleep training. Let's just put your baby in the crib on night one. And you can use a slower, gentler method of sleep training to help them learn to fall asleep in their crib. But let's just go ahead and move forward with the process. So be wheel. That are my, those are my top, two top tips and kind of give you an idea. If your little one's kind of easy going, kind of like, you know, doesn't throw you too many curveballs, you could try the first option. If your little one just really like doesn't adapt well to change, then in my opinion, it's like, why, why add on a few nights of them really, really, really fighting rocking to sleep instead just move forward with sleep training. Um, if you want any more information, I've got a few guides for you. You can go to Baby Sleep Made Simple. We have um, Sleep Training Methods Explained is an article on our website where we explain the top four sleep training methods and who, which babies, ages, and temperaments they work well for. Um, or you can check out our sleep training program, 21 Days to Peace and Quiet. We have four step-by-step -step methods in the program, so it's not just put your baby in the crib and um, you know leave the room for them to fall asleep. We have three methods where you stay with your little one as you teach them to sleep well. Okay, I hope that helps. 
Uh, Grecia Riviera Darius. Baby three months and my baby does not nap. I wish I could say this is the first time I've heard it. Some three month olds can be cheeky. Um, listen, don't worry because I have all the advice for you. If you hop on over to my website, babysleepmadesimple.com, I've got two guides for you. One of them is three month old sleep schedule and the other one is three month old sleep problems and solutions. The three month old that doesn't nap is usually caused by a schedule issue. It's usually an awake time thing. And if you can really spend the next few days really focusing on your baby's awake times and creating a sleep friendly space for them during the day, you will see them start to nap. More than likely your baby's overstimulated. So they've been awake for too long or they're just like developing quickly and they cannot handle these fun, bright rooms with all these things going on or all these voices and all these sounds. Most babies can nap anywhere until four or five months. And then we have to really start creating a nap friendly space. Some babies it's earlier. So check out those two guides. They'll give you a great idea of how to get your little one napping again. All right, good luck. Don't give up. Michelle, hi, tips for breastfeeding mom for traveling on a long flight, please. Yes, bring your breast. <laughs> um, I've done long haul flights with my daughter. She breastfed till she was two, so we probably did at least two or three. I did uh, one with my little guy when he was four months old. We went transatlantic right before lockdown. Um, I mean, I guess the only tip I really have, I mean, it's great that you're breastfeeding because it's easy and you don't have to like, prepare and pack or risk running out, you may want to bring some type of a cover. I mean, as I got more comfortable breastfeeding my daughter, I just would be like, oh, whatever. But you may want to bring some type of a cover. I always, like, I don't like the traditional nursing covers. My babies just hated them. But I love the, like, Aiden and Anais, the muslin cotton blankets or the bamboo cotton blankets, those lightweight ones. I would bring, like, two clean ones on the flight. Um, yeah, on the flight. And I would just kind of, like, drape it over like my seat back. So it wasn't like on my baby's face and they're trying to feed because my babies ain't that, but you could drape it over your seat. So really it's more just for privacy and if your baby's distraction prone, that can help as well. Um, I've got lots of tips for a long fly, but as far as breastfeeding goes, uh, no, I really would say just be concerned about your privacy. Obviously make sure you stay hydrated. Um, but breastfeeding can be a real lifesaver on flights because it can calm your baby um, and it can help them sleep. It's really, I would always breastfeed my babies to sleep on a long haul flight because you can't expect them to like fall asleep on their own usually. Um, There's something else I was gonna say that just popped in my head. Um, ah, take off and landing, their little ears can hurt. So definitely put your baby on the breast for that. But just know that for the first time ever, we bought my little guy a seat. Um, on the long haul flight. Normally my daughter was a lap infant, so she was on the breast, but, but I bought him a seat, so we brought his car seat. And just know that if you do this and you put your baby in the car seat and you strap them in and the plane starts taking off, they will not let you take the baby out of the car seat. And then, cause my baby was screaming, he screamed for the whole takeoff. And I was like, can I just, I need to pick him up. And they were like watching me. They're like, no, 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 no. So like if, if you're buying your baby a seat, just hold them and say, no, no, I'm going to hold them for takeoff and landing and so that you can have the boob accessible. Um, if anybody else has tips for breastfeeding moms on long haul flights, let us know. But really, no. I mean, just keep the boobs nearby. Have something for privacy. Keep yourself well hydrated and fed. And it can be a real lifesaver on flights. Um, on my website, babysleepmadesimple.com, you'll see I have a few traveling guides. But one of them is, what's the name of it? It's like baby travel essentials. And we talk all about what to bring on flights and, and car trips. Um, for your little one. So make sure to check that out. L Kinders, my three and a half month old wakes up at five to 5.30 every morning. No matter what time he goes to bed, I can only get him to sleep if I pull him into bed with me. Any ideas what I can do? There's a few different things that you can do. So first of all, hop on over to my website and look at my five month old sleep training guide. Early wakings, there's a lot I can say about early wakings as well. First of all, if your baby gets used to coming into the bed with you at that time, then more than likely it's likely to continue because babies are really, really smart. Secondly, if you're still helping your baby fall asleep, like at bedtime and other parts of the night, then we don't even really work on early wakings at that point. Like in my program, when we start, we start at bedtime, we focus on night sleep and your little one sleeping independently. And we don't focus too much on uh, early wakings because oftentimes they resolve once your baby is sleeping independently and we get your sleep schedule working out well. So really if, yeah. Oh, you've got a three month old. Yeah, yeah, sorry. So if you have a three month old, I'm not really, I wouldn't really push your little one to um, sleep independently anyway or to self settle. You can try, some three month olds can do it. But if yours can't, then I wouldn't push them too hard. 
So instead, what I would do is hop on over to my website, check out my two three month old guides, three month old sleep schedule, three month old sleep problems and solutions. I bet if you make a few tweaks to your baby's uh, daytime schedule, like with the wake times, um, with the total napping hours. I'm sure that that can help make a difference with the time that they wake up in the morning. Um, what you could do when they wake up in the meantime at this hour is you could feed your little one, but don't pull them into your bed. You could feed them, put them on your shoulder, burp them, and then try, it's fine to have them fall asleep, and then try to get them back into the crib, even for just like another hour, can make the difference and can help break that, um, habit of coming into your bed. It's gonna be hard for you for the first few nights, but if you really want your little one to stay in the crib all night, you can do that. Give them the feed that they're looking for, have them fall asleep, and then gently put them in their crib. If you can get one more hour, you're golden. And then keep doing that while you work on the tips from my sleep guides, which can also help improve your little one's night wakings. Okay, I hope that made sense. B Wheel, do you recommend working on daytime or night sleep first? Thanks so much. Nighttime sleep 100% because Bedtime is the time of day, like in the whole 24 hour day, bedtime is that time of day where your baby is the most tired. Even if they napped great that day, their body clock is telling them it's time to settle down and go to sleep. Melatonin production is increasing. They really want to sleep. So we want to work, we want to use that in our favor. Naps can be hard, naps can be stubborn. We may get awake times wrong. We may be pushing our baby to nap at a time that their body clocks go and like, I don't want to sleep. But bedtime, we know your baby wants to sleep. The drive to sleep is really, really strong. So we always work on night sleep first. We start with bedtime and we do night wakings at the same time. And then once your little one's sleeping great at night for two weeks and it's like, this is all they know. They're just really sleeping well. You're getting a little bit cocky as a parent. You're like, we nailed this that's when you want to start nap training because you need a really well-rested baby during the night to learn how to nap well during the day. It doesn't confuse your baby. Instead, it's just separating out the essential aspects of sleep training and focus on focusing on them one at a time. I prefer to keep your baby will, really well-rested. <laughs> Can you say that six times? Really well-rested um, while you're trying to fix an aspect of their sleep. So nighttime first. Be will if you haven't yet, you can... Um, Click the link in my bio and sign up for my free Exhausted Mom Survival Kit or anybody else, and it walks you through exactly what to do at bedtime to set your little one up to sleep well at night. Alrighty, T in cute. Hi, Jilly, thanks for answering. I'm trying to extend my 13 week old's naps by holding her or the pacifier. Is it gonna ruin putting down drowsy? Same thing with night waking, she falls asleep right after the bottle. You have a young one. They're only three months old, so you have full permission to help extend their naps by going in and holding her or giving the pacifier. I'd probably try to do something that was a little bit more hands-off in the beginning, so give her the pacifier. You could even like try to like feed back to sleep, but then like keep her in the crib or the bassinet. Only, I would try to really do this to extend naps, and then if like nothing works after a week, then you could like hold for the second half of the nap, because I'd hate for you to get trapped, start getting trapped under a napping baby. So try to just do anything that's a little bit more hands-off. Pacifier is really, you know, hands-off. You give it back to your little one, hope she keeps it in for a little while. It's totally fine to do this right now. You just want to keep your baby well rested. You're not nap training at this point anyway. It's totally okay to do. Same thing with night waking. She falls asleep right after the bottle. For a, th God, we had a lot of three-month-olds today. So for a three-month-old, the first thing to do, if you haven't already, is hop on over to my website and check out my three-month-old sleep guides. You can click on the top menu, your baby's age, and find them. Start implementing those tips because that can improve naps. It can improve your baby's night wakings. So once you know you're doing everything that's age-appropriate to help your baby sleep well, but obviously your three-month-old's still going to wake during the night. You're not really sleep training them yet. Once you've done that for like a week and you're like, okay, I'm giving them a good sleep foundation. I'm doing everything I should do, and I want to work a little bit more on it before the five-month-old mark. The way that you could do is you could try to put them down drowsy but awake. Start at bedtime and like get your little into a drowsy state. So she falls asleep right after the bottle. So give her the bottle and then I put her on my shoulder and I'd burp her. But I wouldn't let her fall fully asleep. Just let her kind of get a little bit drowsy and then try to put her in the crib. And then see if you can put your hands on her and kind of rock her side to side or pat her just to see if that'll help her settle. If that's working, that's great. Try that every bedtime for several days. If she starts crying, pick her up for a few minutes, try to put her back down. Do this like three or four times. You will know at that point, okay, I think she's kind of getting the hang of it. I'm just gonna help her a little bit more. Or, oh my gosh, she's screaming, she can't have it, she needs to fall asleep on the bottle. And then don't push her. But if you see that your little one's kind of responsive to it, then I would encourage you to do it. Don't spend more than 20 to 30 minutes max and don't let her get really upset like screaming or anything like that she's only three months old but if she's just kind of fussing and whimpering and moving around and trying to fall asleep on her own then 
continue to encourage that. At three months old, this is what we do. We just see if your baby has it in it or not. And if they don't, it's totally normal. We just have to wait a little bit longer until they're like past that four month mark. Um, okay, I hope that answers your questions. Make sure you check out my guides. Hey Kara, tips for being out during the day. Six month old is on two to two and a half hour wake times, three naps a day. We live 30 minutes from anything, so driving there and back takes an hour, leaving only an hour, or messing with naps. It's a real struggle when you have a frequent napper and you need to get out, baby needs to get out, and if, especially if you need to get stuff done and it's a 30 minute drive. So what I would say Kara is for sure, give yourself permission to like not do everything perfectly first and foremost. I don't believe in having all three naps at home every day. When we were on lockdown, hey, that, that worked. But now that a lot of us, not all of us, but a lot of us are getting back to a normal life, it's not really that feasible. So a few options that you can have, Carrie, remember that third nap of the day is usually a cat nap and it's fine to be on the go. So if you wanna, hop, like after your little one wakes up from the second nap, if you're like, woo, get in the car, you drive to town, you do some fun stuff. If they take a cat nap on the way home, that's perfectly fine. You can even plan for that every day. Um, depends on work, what works with your schedule. Also, just know that sometimes if you have to be out when your little one is due to nap, that it is okay to have them nap in the stroller or to have them nap in the car while, you know, while you're driving. That's also totally fine. Just try to have it be at their appropriate nap time and for the appropriate nap length. Meaning if they normally take a 45 minute second nap, then give them 45 minutes to have that nap. Don't let them fall asleep and then 10 minutes later say, we're home. And then, cause that'll kind of, you know, could affect the rest of their day. Um, but for sure the third nap of the day can be a nap on the go, so feel free to do that if you wanna get out later in the afternoon. Um, it doesn't really matter. I used to say, you know, the first nap of the day is the most important, so always try to have it at home. But really and truly what I've found more and more over the years is as long as we're prioritizing the awake times, as long as we're prioritizing the nap lengths, it's okay. If we have to go to the dentist in the morning and baby naps in the car in the morning that day, it's fine. And next week, if we have to go somewhere in the afternoon and they nap, that's fine too. Just try to work it around their nap schedule. Um, and just know that you have a baby that naps frequently and it can be nearly impossible to be home for every single nap. So don't stress too hard about it. Okay, I hope that that helps. FJ Bale, can you do can you do sleep training while teething? My little girl has five teeth and cutting three more at the moment. I'm struggling to get her to self settle. Any advice? She's 11 months. If you see your little one is like really and truly struggling with teething, like you see them popping through and she's just not herself. She's not eating. Her like even though you want to sleep train, you notice that sleep has gotten even worse. She's more clingy and just not having it during the night. She's not herself. Then I'd probably wait a few days, wait two to three days to let this phase pass. Um, you could also talk to your baby's doctor and you could say, hey, <clears throat> excuse me, I really think my little one is teething. If you haven't yet already, they're already 11 months, but you know, can I give a pain medicine? And so if you suddenly get baby Motrin or baby Tylenol and suddenly your baby's happy as is eating better, takes a better nap, then you know that pain's really bothering them. And so I would wait a few days. Um, I wouldn't start sleep training. I mean, just the same way that I wouldn't start it when they were sick. I wouldn't start it when your little one is uncomfortable. But I would also not let teething be the reason I'm not sleep training for like a week or more. So if you're convinced it's happening today and today's Tuesday, then I would say, okay, well, we can still plan to sleep train like starting this weekend in three to four days because teething pain typically does not last any more than two days, maybe three. Um, but yeah, if you see your, one, your little one actively struggling, then I would just delay it a few days. Braun, my 11 month old has all of a sudden stopped napping well and is getting up at 4 a.m. for an hour. What's going on? It's been five days. Do we need to sleep train again? Well, let me tell you something, Bron. <laughs> something that a lot of people don't know about is that there can be a nap specific regression at 11 months, which sounds like hocus pocus, but I assure you it's not because I hear about it all the time from my clients. An 11 month old who is suddenly fighting both naps, taking short naps for both, or fighting one nap consistently, many parents say, oh, we need to drop down to one nap. It's plainly obvious that we need to do it but don't do it because 11 months is too young to drop down to one nap. Keep with two naps a day. It is a nap specific regression. It's a normal part of development. The best thing you can do is just stick with the nap times and the nap routine that was working and your little one will bounce back. I even have it in my 11 month old sleep guide on my website. I have a section on this and I included specific quotes from our Facebook group from the moms talking about this regression to another mom saying, hang in there. It took me two weeks. It took me one week, you know, but your little one will bounce back. 
So for an 11 month old, I would use her wake times of like two and a half in the morning, probably three during the day, three and a half to four before bedtime. And just continue to encourage your little one to take naps. And I promise you, it'd be the weirdest thing. This specific regression is quite weird. After one to two weeks, they'll just bounce back as long as you've stayed consistent. Now, if they're getting up at 4 a.m. for an hour, um, the best thing you can do, as I mentioned earlier with the previous question, is if your little one is awake in the night but not upset, then just wait it out. Just stay back and let them roll around, let them talk, let them do whatever it is because it's clearly developmental. Something's going on. Their brain and their body can't relax. Be hands off so that as soon as this phase passes, they go right back to falling asleep on their own. If you're like, oh, I just need to get her back to sleep because we're both losing sleep, I would encourage you to not do it because this is really a short-term problem because then you'll definitely have to sleep train again because your little one's now used to you helping them back to sleep in the night. Um, you may need to do a sleep training tune-up. Um, it's been five days. I'd probably... I spend the next day or two just really watching awake times, really trying to get my little one to nap well, really being hands off in the night. If she falls back asleep at 5 a.m., hopefully she falls back asleep at 5 a.m., you know, let her get a good chunk of sleep, then give it a few days, and then you could probably start a sleep training tune up on the weekend. So just start fresh with whatever method you used before to get her falling back asleep on her own. You can do this especially if you've fallen into the habit of like comforting her to sleep, helping her to sleep, giving extra feeds. You can start that sleep training tune up, we call it, um, this weekend. Otherwise, just hang in there. Regressions suck. But if you see your baby and she's exploding in development, like talking or just doing all kind of like motor skills, just I know it doesn't help you feel more rested. But for instance, like my little guy's exploding right now and like his naps had been like micro naps all weekend. But I was watching him. He's like, baba, la, la, ra, 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 ba. And his, you know, his little finger tricks that I was talking about. And I was like, and my husband, dude, doesn't know anything about baby sleep <laughs> he's even like look at his brain his brain's going off like crazy and i was like see yeah so if you see that at least you know why it's happening so um let your little one practice new skills as much as possible especially if it's physical milestones hang in there keep up with your consistent routines and consider doing a sleep training tune-up this weekend all right i hope that helps Bron. cld i have a two and a half year old still sleeping in the cot in our room she sleeps all night which is great that is fantastic <laughs> Baby's due in October. Congratulations. Do I need to move her before the arrival or what do you think? Yeah, definitely before because you don't want her to associate like I got kicked out of the room when the baby brother or sister showed up. So if your baby's due in October, you could start moving now. I mean, the, the more you can separate it, the better. And it gives you time to like fix any issues that might come up. So you have a two and a half year old. So I would definitely, yeah, I would talk to your little one. Is it a girl? Yeah. Talk to your little one and I would really just get excited. Don't mention the baby at all. Just say, oh, you've got, look at your bedroom. It's so great. Let's decorate it together. You know, let's hang a picture, get those little wall stickers and um, continue to have your little one sleep in a crib as long as possible. Get a second crib. I beg you to get a second crib or you could get like a bassinet. Um, it's just that idea, like some little ones stay in the crib up to four years old and when you have a new baby in the house, it's up in the night. The last thing you want is like going through major transitions together. So if it were me and it was me very recently, get a second crib for sure. Um, move the crib and move your toddler's crib into her bedroom and say, oh, what are we going to do with your big girl bed? I mean, she's two and a half. So like she can sleep with a teddy bear, help her decorate the room, help her hang out in there. Really, really hype it up. And what you could do if she's kind of like a bit reluctant, then you can sleep in the room with her the first few nights. So set up her crib, move everything into her room, meaning the bedtime routine and everything. Your bedroom is now a thing of the past. She doesn't go in there at any point during her bedtime routine. She doesn't go in there at 5 a.m. for cuddles. Like your bedroom is gonna become a place where just, you know, mommy sleeps and, and the baby and there won't be any of like, I was kicked out. So I'd start moving her earlier, move her crib into there, do her whole bedtime routine in her new bedroom, get her down in the crib. And if you notice any issues that come up, you could consider sleeping in there, camping out in there for a few nights. Better to do it earlier in your pregnancy um, as well. You can put down a little mattress or, you know, whatever, whatever you need to do. It can help you feel secure that she's okay and it can help her. And you can do it for like a week or so, however long you want, if you're comfortable. And then you have time. You've got three months to slowly work yourself out of the room and have her room be a place where she sleeps on her own through the night amazingly so that when little sibling comes it's not an issue at all um okay i hope that that helps good luck 
Haley, almost eight month old is almost running out of time for a third nap, but it's too long to stay awake until bedtime. We move bedtime earlier, but then he wakes up as early as 5.15. So oftentimes when we're dropping the third nap for a younger baby, you can try to stretch awake times like to two, three, four. So for a seven to eight month old, usually awake time should be two to three hours, right? Like two, two and a half, three, but sometimes the math doesn't add up. So what we do is if your little one's still young, it's like a really a matter of, if they're older, nine or 10 months, then we can push them on awake times throughout the day. But for a younger baby, but they're just rejecting that third nap, you may, and they like short awake times in general, you could go with like a two, three, four schedule. That can often help you um, get the naps in, but have long enough awake time so that your bedtime isn't like 5.30 p.m. Um, and your little one can be expected to sleep 11 to 12 hours a night. So they're falling asleep at six o'clock on the dot, which is sometimes needed. Uh, then waking at 5.15, is early, but it's not, you know, it's kind of understandable given the fact that they went to sleep at six o'clock. So you could try to do that. You could check out my guide on dropping down um, how to transition from three to two naps on my website, Baby Sleep Made Simple. I would say if the last awake time of the day is like more than four hours, then for sure that's too long, but you could push your little one a little bit and try to have them asleep at like three hours, 45 minutes or the four hour mark and see if that helps. If you've been, for instance, trying to stick to a three hour wait time, push it to three and a half hours for your days and you can even push in a little bit more if they're a good napper, especially if they're getting like three total hours of daytime naps, that can really help. And check out my guide on dropping the third nap. I hope that helps. Rosalinda, what age do you recommend transitioning to a toddler bed? I recommend, I in an ideal world, um, age three, because at that point your little one is old enough, they have the cognitive maturity and the impulse control to understand that they should stay in their bed all night. I also believe that we shouldn't, or I don't recommend transitioning to a toddler bed as a fun milestone, like, oh, look at you, you're turning two, let's change your bed, even though you're sleeping great. The reason why you should transition to a toddler bed is because your little one is like three, three and a half or older and is asking for it or your child is repeatedly climbing out of the crib despite you doing everything you can to keep them in, and it's become a safety risk. But youngest two and a half years. So if your little one is younger than two and a half years old and you're just like, let's get them a new bed, and there are many parents that do this, and they're just like, oh, we know these cute toddler beds at Ikea, we thought it'd be a great second birthday present. Don't do it, it will lead to a lot of sleep issues and a lot of tears for you. So instead, leave your little one in the crib as long as possible until they're climbing out and it's a safety risk or they're asking for it. Like, all my cousins have big girl beds and I'm three and a half. When can I get out of this crib? Okay, I hope that helps. Liana, hi. My baby is used to sleeping in darkness even in the daily sleeps and I find it difficult to make her sleep in the daylight if we're outside. What do I do? This can be a problem if we do get our little ones like used to sleeping in darkness. And, and some parents say this, like I don't want to use darkness because I don't want my baby to get addicted to it. What if we need to have a nap while we're out? And so my answer to that is we should always use whatever we can to help our little ones sleep well. And if 90% of the time you're at home, then we should definitely aim to get your little one sleeping well at home. But what happens if my baby's now older, my toddler's older, and they're just too excited or distracted and they just can't nap, then I would say that day, just do the best that you can. And if your little one doesn't nap, it's okay. Like you can't always be home every single day, have an early bedtime that day and start fresh the next day. Um, if you are trying to now have them routinely nap while on the go and it's not working, then you could get a product like a snooze shade. You can like look that up on Amazon. Snooze shade makes covers for strollers. So they're dark material, they're completely, they let air in and out, but they're basically like blackout material. So they'll cover your baby stroller if you're gonna have a stroller on the go. They also make them for travel cribs. So when you're traveling and you can't black out the windows where you're staying, then you can tra you can cover their travel crib. A lot of parents love the snooze shades. So you could check that out. Um, Liana. Otherwise, if you're like, oh, we were just kind of like trying it out, but my little one only naps once or twice a day. It's not a big deal to be at home. Then I would say probably just have them nap at home as much as you can. And on the off days or on the Sundays where you guys are out and it's just not happening, try your hardest, get them to nap in the stroller, cover the stroller, see if at least you can get some sort of daytime sleep. But if not, just know that it's okay and have an early bedtime that day and start again the next day. All right. I hope that that helps. I know it can be hard. If we're coming out of lockdown. I had a client 
uh, today in our group and she's like, I'm a new mom and I've only had this baby on lockdown. So we did every nap at home. Like now I'm nervous about napping on the go. And I totally get it. So you do the best that you can. You give yourself some grace and you recognize that you can't do everything perfectly. You can't always be home for a nap. Um, but you have the tools and you have the tips to help your little one continue to sleep well, even if they have a crappy nap while well out one day. Ah, speaking of, Nat says, my 10 week old will not nap anywhere but at home. Um, so Nat, hop on over to my website, babysleepmadesimple.com and check out my two month old sleep guide because you may find that just making tweaks, tweaks to your little one's sleep schedule will improve their sleep overall and will help them uh, nap well. Most 10 week olds can nap on the go easily. You may have one of these really, um, these babies that wake up early to the world, like super energetic, super spirited and engaged. Um, so it could also be that, it could be your little one's temperament. Um, and in that case, you could also check out one of these products like the Snooze Shade. So if you need to be out because you have a 10 week old, they're gonna nap all the time. Then what you can do, it worked really well with my daughter, is um, when it was time to nap, we'd be walking for, we'd go in for a stroll, I would just cover that pram and be like, lights out, honey. She might wiggle around for a few minutes and then she'd fall asleep. So babies really need you just to turn off all stimulation. Um, especially as they get older, but for some 10 week olds. So your little one may just be way too distractible. So definitely try to, if you're out, um, make sure they're laying flat in the stroller and then just cover it with something like the snooze shade or like a muslin cotton blanket, maybe like a dark one, dark gray or a black or a navy blue. And that could help. Maybe they need you to shut off the stimulation for them. But definitely check out my two month old sleep guide because it's got other sleep tips that could also help them nap well when out. L Kinders, when should I start putting my baby down to sleep, still awake, but drowsy? At five months um, is when you can begin sleep training. So 20 weeks from your baby's due date is when the majority of babies have the ability to learn to fall asleep on their own. I do not love the phrase drowsy, but awake. I've come to dislike it over the years because the drowsy part is vague and it can lead to your little one not responding well to sleep training. We actually don't want babies drowsy. We want them fully awake and aware of, I'm going into my crib, there's mommy, she just gave me a kiss, she just sang me a lullaby, now she's leaving the room and turning off the light, now I'm falling asleep on my own. When your little one can do this easily without crying, which is what sleep training helps you achieve, when your little one can do this, then they learn to sleep through the night. They learn to sleep really long stretches at night and resettle themselves when they wake. If they're helped to sleep, even a little bit, if they're like, oh, I'm so dozy, I don't really know where I am. Is mommy here? Is mommy not here? And they go into the crib. When they wake up a few hours later in the night, all they remember is mommy was a part of the process, so I still need her to help me get to a drowsy state. So instead, forget the drowsy and just work on putting your little one in the crib awake, and this can happen at five months old. I have a guide on my website, five month old sleep training tips, if you want to check that out. Shay Lou, my six month old goes to bed only while nursing and he wakes often for comfort feedings. We co-sleep. Can you let me know if I can sleep train him as we co-sleep? Yes, you can. If you want to continue co-sleeping but sleep train, anything is possible. I do have, I've had parents in the program, in, the, in my program in the past, who later on were like, oh yeah, by the way, we did all your steps and we continue to share a bed. And I was like, what, really? And they're like, yeah, we're great. Um, but you should know my program, we really focus on getting your baby in the crib. Um, but sleep training while co-sleeping is possible. It can just be harder because your little one is used to laying right next to you and having access to the boob all night. So kind of taking the boob away and having them stay right next to you and smelling you and hearing you and feeling you can be really hard for some babies. Um, and it can make sleep training go a lot harder basically and can make parents give in because their little one's fighting it more. So instead getting your little, getting your little one sleeping in a separate sleep space like the crib can still be in your bedroom. But getting them sleeping in their own sleep space can really help them to adapt because they're not touching you, smelling you, feeling you all night. It's like they have a little bit more distance, they have space around them, and they can learn to sleep more independently. Um, but a six-month-old can definitely learn to sleep independently and to sleep amazingly at night. Um, you can check out my website, babysleepmadesimple.com, and you can check out my six-month-old sleep training tips guide. Okay, I hope that helps. Liana, she's teething badly. Is it okay to hold her to make her sleepy and then put her in the crib? She's back waking two times 
while before teething, she was sleeping through the night. Listen, this is just my opinion, but if I if my little one was sleeping through the night and is now waking up more and she's obviously teething, I would give a medication because it suddenly helps them sleep better. They don't feel bad. So you can talk to your baby's doctor. You can give it 45 minutes before bedtime, and then you may have to give it in the night if your little one wakes up and then it takes like 30 minutes to kick in. But yeah, in the meantime, it's fine to give her cuddles, you know, help her uh, calm down, and then ideally put her back in the crib awake to fall back to sleep. But if my, like when my six year old comes to me and she's like, I have a headache, I'll never forget the first time she said, I have a headache. I was like, you can tell me what's wrong. You know, she was probably three. Um, but when my six year old comes to me and says, I have a headache, like I don't hesitate. I say, well, let's give you some medication so you feel better. So if you know it's teething, if you see that it's teething during the day, then for me personally, I give my little one medication. And if I see them instantly sleep better, it's like, ah, they didn't feel good, you know, I provided comfort. But it's up to you, you can talk to your baby's doctor about it. Um, if you go to my YouTube channel and if you do a search there for teething pain remedies, I also have other um, ways to help your baby's teething pain get remedied <laughs> or soothed. Um, but yes, Liana, it's fine to also hold her and give her extra cuddles if she's not feeling well. Giselle, my four and a half month old falls asleep in my arms but starts complaining. So I put her down in the crib and pat her. She seems to be falling asleep but keeps opening her eyes again and fussy on and off. If your little one is complaining about being in your arms, Giselle, then follow her lead and put her in the crib and just give some hands on comfort to help her fall asleep in the crib because that's going to be the goal anyway. She's four and a half months old, so she's almost five months old five months old, get a heavy tongue today. She's almost five months old, so she could be pointing you in the direction of, I need to learn how to sleep independently. I was talking about this also with one of uh, the parents in our group recently. You know, parents can sometimes reach a point where like, I'm trying to help my little one sleep and nothing's working, nothing's working. And I'm like, well, if nothing that you're doing is working, could we see this as a positive sign that your little one is ready to learn to sleep on their own? Like nothing else is working, but we know that this will work, should we try it? So Giselle, you could also consider that too if you're trying to hold her, but she's not having it. Put her in the crib and try to be a little bit more hands off. See how much she can do on her own. Um, you can also check out my guide, Why Is My Four Month Old Not Sleeping? Because it has age specific tips to help your baby learn to sleep well. All right, I hope that helps. Gabby, my baby's 10 months and finally learned how to sleep by himself. That's awesome. Uh, he still cries a lot when we leave the room. It's been 16 days since we started the controlled crying method. Should I change my method? So here's the deal. He's learned to sleep by himself. He still cries a lot. So if you use a crying sleep training method and your little one is still crying at bedtime or during the night, but for 20 minutes max or less, then keep with your method. For babies that use a crying method, it can sometimes take a few weeks for them to learn to not cry to fall asleep. But usually it's like 20 minutes for a few nights, 15 minutes, then 10, then five, then like one minute, like some moms will be like, it's one minute of hysterical crying and then they just fall asleep. Um, but if your little one is crying more than 20 minutes, um, it's really getting dragged out, then I would just look at two things. Number one, have I been inconsistent? In any way, have I changed up my method? Have I sometimes comforted my baby more, fed them to sleep, held them to sleep? Have an honest look at your behavior because there's no judgment, there's no blaming. But if you have been inconsistent, that's why your baby's continuing to cry. So just say, that's it, it's happened, it's in the past. From tonight, we are gonna stick to the steps of our method 100%. And when you do that, you will see your baby adapt a lot better and not cry. The second thing could be like a schedule issue. Has bedtime fluctuated? Have naps been crazy and fluctuating? If so, then work on having a super consistent bedtime that doesn't vary by more than 15 or 20 minutes every night and really focus on getting your little one napping well during the day. So those are the two reasons why sleep training kind of drags on a little bit. So have Gabby, like you just have an honest assessment and be like, okay, it's me, I've been inconsistent. That's totally fine, we've all been there, but like from tonight you stick to your steps and I reckon in two to three days your baby will have a turnaround and we'll start settling a lot easier. Okay, last question because I have one minute left. Nat, what age to start sleep training for Bert and how to do this when room sharing with an older sibling? So definitely don't room share while you sleep train. So baby gets sleep trained somewhere else or older sibling, if they're a great sleeper, can they come? Can you make like a pallet in your bedroom for a few nights? Can they sleep there? Or can they sleep in the living room? Depending on how old they are. Who can you, mo who can you move out? Sometimes it's you sleep train baby in your room and you sleep in the living room a few nights. If you're really worried, if you have like a two-year-old or your three-year-old and you don't want to mess with their sleep, leave them where they are. Where can I sleep train baby? In my bedroom, in a quiet, dark corner of the house. And I wouldn't have siblings share a bedroom until 
your baby's sleeping through the night like amazingly for several weeks and ideally is like close to a year old. Um, okay, I've got like 30 seconds left. So at five months old, you can begin sleep training. So 20 weeks from your baby's due date, you can begin sleep training. Um, but definitely I would not have them room sharing during sleep training. I would separate them. I play white noise in both of their bedrooms. And once your baby is sleeping amazingly for several weeks, you can consider room sharing or try to wait until they're a year old. Just depends. Okay, I hope that helps. Um, Sorry guys, I'm scared to look. Yeah, there's, yeah, wow, there's a lot more questions. Okay guys, sorry if I didn't get to all your questions, um, but I hope you guys got some good sleep tips. You can always hop on over to Baby Sleep Made Simple to find your age appropriate sleep guide for your baby. Have a wonderful week. It was great to chat and I will see you guys soon. Take care.